Greetings and a warm welcome to the third session of the question and answer midweek service with Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. We'd like to thank you so much for being a part of the program today. We'd like to also thank you for your submissions that you have been sending through to the Prophet. Now, we'd like to encourage you before we get the ball rolling this evening to send your questions through and to always remember these two very important instructions. When you do send through your message and your question, please make sure that you specify your full name and surname. And once you've done that, let us know, most importantly, which country you are sending your message to us from. Now, let us begin this wonderful evening. We're joined in studio by Pastor Chikuni, and in a few moments, we will be introducing Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. Pastor Chikuni. Thank you for having me, Pastor. Question and answer session. One of those times where we get an opportunity to ask freely. Yes. From our own environment, mm. without looking at the people around you. Yes. Asking the very pertinent questions, the mm. issues that really affect us in life, mm. and getting those answers. You know, I was mm. thinking, though sometimes the questions may seem individualistic, but you look at the way they are answered. Yes. And you will know that you are dealing with one who hears from God. Mm. It is not one answer that is given. It is an answer that befits nearly everybody. Exactly. And we really thank God for such a wonderful time asking mm. the most important questions in our lives. Indeed. And isn't it so wonderful that when you look at the timing of when these question and answer sessions began, it began on the Thursday, just after the Sunday service, mm. where the voice was explaining to us the darkness of God, how you have parts of God that are obscure, mm -hmm. parts mm -hmm. that are so complex to understand, mm -hmm. and how he as a spirit, he as the prophet, he has been given a special advantage and entry by God into those dark areas where he can pull out light and bring understanding. Mm -hmm. And so it's important to encourage those that are watching to know that everything that the voice does is prophetically timed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, if there mm -hmm. ever was a time when an individual should send through their questions, it's right now. Mm -hmm, you know, life mm -hmm. is made up of so many complexities and things that you try and figure out. But what a joy to have an opportunity where you can bring even the most silly sounding question, but just get to the bottom of it and get clarity on some of these strange issues. Some people have had overhanging questions from their childhood. This is the place. You know, it's, it's very funny, Pastor Kwaramba, that sometimes when we are in a, an environment where there are many people and you're given an opportunity to ask, sometimes you look around you and you believe that ah, maybe probably I might be asking probably a substandard question or something. Mm. But then you begin to realize after the answer then comes that most of the people that you thought knew or were going to look <laughs> down upon you were probably worse than you. Mm. So getting this opportunity to ask your individual questions yes. from your own environment mm. and most importantly, freely exactly you know it's interesting in the comment section you'll always find people that are trying to answer <laughs> the question <laughs> before the voice answered yeah. and it's interesting how you'll find a few people coming through and saying just hold on just hold, hold on. on the voice is about to answer the question so let's just all take it easy because i think part of the intimidation is that a lot of people seem to have answers mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. some of these questions and it's important that people know that we respect their confidentiality. So someone might send a question through that is very sensitive in mm. nature, mm. and they might send their name and might mm. send mm. Um, mm. the country they're from. Mm. They should feel free to just write, please hide my name, or please make this anonymous. And we will do that. We will make it anonymous when we present these questions to the voice. I think confidentiality is something that is very important. People must understand that whatever we do here, whatever the voice says and mm. how he addresses each and every individual that asks, asks a question. Mm. It has a fatherly nature in it. That's yes. one thing that I love about our father, yes, Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. Mm. He's not just a father to us, but a father to the nations. And the way he responds, I think history can tell. Mm. He's a father by nature. Indeed. And so like you kept on reiterating freely. <laughs> <laughs> so we encourage you to send through your questions on Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa's Facebook page directly to his inbox or you can use the email info at emmanuelmakandiwa.com. Right, let us begin this wonderful evening and allow us to introduce 
the voice prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa. Father, we are so grateful for this opportunity. <laughs> Thank you so much for affording it to us. I don't know if we should call it affording it to us. <laughs> because I don't think we can pay for it, but um, you really have done something marvelous for us, opening up this opportunity. And Father, there's so many areas that are so complex. And um, you've given us this channel where we can present to you the most complex of issues that we carry within our hearts. And you then outline the answers in such a practical manner that we can leave your presence and we can go and implement what we've learned. Mm -hmm. And Father, we continually realize that when we find ourselves in vexing situations and in areas that we don't understand or encountering situations that are difficult to get through, in your presence, we realize that it's our fault because you've opened up this platform and you said, bring your questions forward. I'd like to assist you. So we are so grateful for this opportunity that allows us to get clarity in our lives. Our life. Well, thank thank you so much, thank Father. Thank you. We are also grateful to the people who are always here. And uh, we, I consider it an, an opportunity as well to be asked questions, you know. So it's part of our job. We need to be providing solutions and making sure that people uh, don't stay for too long in darkness. We have to make our light shine and um, be there when we are needed. So I'm so glad to be here. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Father. Thank you. Father, last week we, we got into a question and uh, I think because of where our time was, yeah. you, you just gave us a tip of the iceberg in terms of um, explaining to us uh, what I felt was one of the most important aspects that you brought up yeah. about that question. If you'd allow us now, would you like us yeah, to get into your questions? Sure, sure. Thank you, Father. The questions. <laughs> yeah. um, Father, we withheld this name because of the sensitive nature of the question. Uh, and it's coming from South Africa. Father, the question goes like this. Afternoon. I stay here in South Africa. Let me say I am a man of God and I have a spiritual father. And I discover that the same spiritual father is evolved in wrongdoings. I'm wrong to remain in ministry and no longer having him as father. Prophet, till where should a spiritual father interfere with your ministry? Is it right to have a spiritual father for each, everyone to have spiritual father? <sighs> now we are starting with the last question. Um, like you've heard, I think this uh, person um, is a, also a man of God. He's a pastor. And there seem to be some complications yeah, as far as uh, his relationship with his father is concerned. Mm. And um, he, he, he wants to know. I think the greater part, I answered that some weeks ago. Yeah. Um, but uh, there is quite a lot that needs to be looked into because it's not just one question. There are too many questions in there. Mm -hmm. He, he, he's talking about his uh, father or his pastor, or maybe let's call him his mentor so that we can accommodate uh, quite a lot of people, some who doesn't believe in, in, in this fatherhood theme, but they do believe in mentorship. Unless, if you again don't believe in mentorship, then we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's say, this is his mentor, and um, 
he has discovered that his mentor is involved in some evil acts, mm. maybe sinful acts. Mm. Uh, and um, he wants to know now, after that discovery, whether it is right for him to continue on with such kind of a, a relationship, and obviously how that would affect him mm -hmm. uh, consequently. Uh, too many questions, and he's saying how far, again, if I heard you well, should uh, a father interfere mm -hmm. with your ministry? Yes. That's when I got to know again that he is not in his father's ministry. Mm -hmm. He is running his own ministry. But the question is, um, should I still continue mm -hmm. running the ministry mm -hmm. without this father? And then he ended by saying, is it a must? Yes. That everyone should uh, have a father. Too many questions in one question. <laughs> but uh, I, I think uh, he is very honest. Mm -hmm. And I like the way that he has raised this question because he didn't, he didn't mention the uh, name of his father, mm. which is good. Mm. Yeah. And um, you did also very well by uh, not mentioning his name so that no one gets to know the man that we are uh, addressing here, whether the son or the father. Mm. Both remain unknown. <sighs> the discovery part. Mm how he got <laughs> to know <laughs> that his father is involved in some evil deeds. It's, it's not uh, that easy. I would really love to know mm. how this son uh, got to know what his father is doing and how far his father is involved in these uh, evil works, whatever those deeds are, he didn't mention. We can only assume. Yes. Uh, how did you come across such a discovery? Mm. How did you get to know that your father is involved in sinful acts. How did you discover that? That's, that's to me is very important <laughs> because the processes that leads into discoveries are very important. Because if the process is flawed, mm. sometimes even the discoveries are equally flawed. Wow. Um, did you find that yourself or you heard from somebody who mm. did the discovery on your behalf and then came and brought information to you that, ah, you know what, mm. this is what I came across. So if it was somebody who discovered that and then you were told, I wouldn't want you to personalize that discovery. You can't be sure. Mm. If you physically discovered that he is doing something that is wrong, wrong according to biblical standards and what is expected of a man of God and maybe his behavior, maybe his character uh, is uh, in direct contradiction with the word of God. Then um, um, I wish he had really pointed out the area 
having, having omitted the name of the man of God. There was no more need for him to hide mm. the, the evil things that the, the man of God, yeah, exactly, there's no point. Why hide what he is doing when you have hidden his name? His name. Yes, Father. That was going to make it easier for me to answer that question. Then I would have actually focused on the actual deed mm. that the pastor is doing. And, um, and measure you as well against that particular deed. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you see. But the reason why most people would eventually want to leave the men of God on the basis of uh, them having discovered something wrong, um, it's a terrible thing because You, in as much as a man of God, is a man of God, is still a man. Wow. He is still a man. When God arrives in a man, the main part is never done away with. Oh. The God that gets into the man mm. doesn't really suppress the man. Wow. You still have a combination of both God mm. and the man. Wow. So you always have the man doing certain things and have the God in the man doing something completely different. All right. So, if you have a spiritual father, before we talk of any other discovery, which is evil, mm -hmm. you must have discovered first the spirituality of the father, which is what makes him a spiritual, spiritual father, father. He, he, he must be spiritual. That's the first discovery. Don't, 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 don't start by discovering anything, everything else apart from that. You must have discovered that the man is spiritual. Mm. Without that spirituality, he's not qualified wow. to be regarded, not as a father, mm. but as a spiritual, spiritual one. Okay, because yes, you can have a father who is not that spiritual, but by reason of him giving birth to you, originating certain things in your life, he still remains a father, but calling a man my spiritual father, you must have seen or discovered the spirituality of that father. Mm. So we are moving into discoveries. That's the most important discovery. Have you discovered? the spirituality of your spiritual father? If the answer is no, then why call him spiritual a father. spiritual father? If your spiritual father is really a spiritual father, again, for you to be called his spiritual son, he must also have discovered some spirituality <laughs> in the son. <laughs> Otherwise, if you are still carnal and calling another man a spiritual father, in response, he is not obligated to call you a spiritual son unless there is mm. a spiritual DNA okay. that is his, mm -hmm. but in you. Then it is that part that he, he refers to mm. as son. son. Not all of you. Mm. The spiritual part that he gave birth to. Wow. And you were made a custodian of that DNA. And it is that DNA that he terms son. son. Wow. Mm. And when you respond by saying, my father, I am here, it is the father that gave birth to the spirituality in you mm. that you are responding to. So you can't have a father, a spiritual father, <laughs> and have a spiritual son 
if none of the two are spiritual. Mm. So you may want your father to be very, very spiritual <laughs> for you to qualify him as a spiritual father, but are you also qualified to be a spiritual son if you are not that spiritual? Mm. If your father is spiritual and you are not spiritual, he is a spiritual father, but not your spiritual father. Wow. I said, if your father is very spiritual <laughs> and you are not spiritual, he may be a spiritual father, but not your spiritual father. So, yeah, you want to ask something? <laughs> <laughs> as long as we stay within the question, that's okay. <laughs> I can keep on elaborating <laughs> on that. Because we're talking about discoveries here. Yes. Before we get to the evil part, yes, there must have been a good discovery. You must have discovered something about this man. And is that thing that you discovered still there mm -hmm. or it has vanished? My father, you have already prophesied that it might move us aside a bit, but it came as a point of concern mm -hmm. as you were highlighting. And from a son's perspective, mm -hmm. I think number one, the, the first question that came into me was, as a son, am I expected to be spiritual before I meet my father? Number one. Mm -hmm. Then number two, when I assess or look at my father or look at my need of having a father, Am I, at the same time, equipped enough to know my father <laughs> and make the choice of a father? <laughs> Number two. <laughs> <laughs> the first question uh, is the same. I think we, we, are, we, are, we are dealing with the same thing here. Mm. Am I expected to be that spiritual before what? I discover or make a choice of a father. Okay. Can you even make that choice Do you think that will ever cross your mind, the idea of even wanting to have a father before you become spiritual? I don't think so. <laughs> mm. So the question uh, of uh, whether the spirituality aspect comes after you have found a father or before, I think even before there is uh, the seed, you must have some kind of spirituality in you for you even to realize that you have a need for a spiritual father. And then when you find your father or when your father has found you, then it is that seed, little seed, of spirituality that he starts dealing with. Mm -hmm. And then he will start nurturing that. He will look after that. That's the seed that he will then father. Okay. Okay. Because a father is an originator. Wow. You can be born and be thrown into a trash bin. And then somebody can pick you, look after you, nurture you and can become your father. Mm. So, for that idea to even be conceived in your mind, there must be some element of spirituality. Otherwise, you, you can't even think of that. And then you went on to touch on, am I really spiritual enough to understand? My father, even when he's giving me instructions. Okay, we'll look into that again. But look. Father, um, I, I'm sorry to bring this up, but I, I thought before before we, we carry on, I just wanted to ask if you could um, uh, help us. Maybe not now, Father, mm -hmm. maybe further on. Um, this past Sunday, you you showed us something that we, we didn't know was in existence, that witchcraft originates from the flesh. 
Now, all along we thought it was a spiritual act. And you said, regardless of the manifestation, even if it's a spiritual manifestation, mm -hmm. it, it originates from the flesh. Yes. And then you taught us two weeks ago that the problem with us is that we don't know how to define terms. Now, coming from those two experiences with you these past two Sundays, I'm drawn to ask you to help us to understand what spirituality is. Because um, I think on a personal level, and also for, for those that are watching, we may want to assume that we, we are understanding you as you flow and you teach us concerning spirituality and a spiritual father. And we f fail to be in line with you in terms of defining really what spirituality is. And last Sunday was almost a case in point. We thought witchcraft was spiritual and yet we discovered <laughs> it's, of the, it's of the flesh. And, and we were greatly surprised by that discovery. Um, and, and so now I think the worry is, do, do we really know what you mean when you tell us that spirituality is supposed to be found in a son? Do we know what it means to be spiritual? Because there's so many practices that we may do and assume that I am being spiritual and yet we are practicing something mm -hmm. else. Father. I'm sorry about that, Father. I just thought it's I all right. <laughs> <laughs> I wish the question was on spirituality. <laughs> but anyway, I, I'm, I, I don't want to promise that I will bring that up again. But <laughs> given an opportunity, I would love really to look into that because it helps you at least know who you are and what you are. But you know, spirituality doesn't begin after you have found um, your, your spiritual father who is in a physical body, because you were formed in the likeness of God. So you have that spiritual part, which is you are actually spiritual. You are the spirit yes. that lives in a physical body. But for that spirit, man, to be nurtured and be cultivated and to be looked after, there is need for another man who is highly gifted in the area of mentorship. And, of, and, and ultimately that man becomes your father. That's why I said you have to be spiritual mm, mm, mm. first. But your spirituality is not at its mature level. So looking, getting a father, what you really want to achieve is not necessarily spirituality, but maturity of it. Wow. You want to be nurtured into becoming mm. better. Mm. You see, Paul had a way of presenting it that he is really fighting so hard mm. until Christ is birthed wow. in a person. But looking at this man, mm. um, we may end up answering one question here. <laughs> but. Uh, I would love to hear if we've got also other questions related to that. You can bring them in before we get to the end. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, if you find some similarities in, 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 in those questions, just, just bring them on. And thank then you, I can Father. Answer them so that I can just feel uh, <laughs> comfortable knowing that I'm answering at least <laughs> 20 questions at the same time. <laughs> but anyway, so this man wants to know I've, he has discovered, but I said in the process, the processes that leads to the discovery mm. are supposed to be investigated as well. Yes, are they good processes? Yes, sir. How did you get to know that your father is into some dubious things? Mm. Um, did somebody tell you that? Did the media? help you discover that oh. is the newspaper involved because all these are not approved channels mm -hmm. you see i remember at some point talking to a very influential person he was uh, regarded to be a great leader in his circle, mm -hmm. well-respected. 
a politician. So we are enjoying ourselves, having dinner. And then he opened up after having realized some contradictions. What he might have had concerning me mm. and what he's seeing and what he's experiencing. Mm -hmm. And some of the people that might have uh, advised him that I'm not that accurate, I'm not that true. And then he has tested the gift. And he has got no words, he doesn't know what to do, he doesn't know what to say. Yeah. Now to him, the prophetic is a reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I could see that the man is being buffeted by wrong information. Mm. He doesn't know how to uh, come out and really open up and say out his thoughts. Mm. Until at a certain point, he then opened up, he said, you know, I used to believe all these things that I was hearing about you. And I said, hearing from who? Mm -hmm. And he mentioned the newspapers, you know, what we read in the papers. Mm -hmm. And then I said to him, but isn't it amazing that you guys, you are so much learned and you wouldn't be sitting where you are seated right now. Had you been that ignorant, there must be some kind of intelligence that, that you have. He said, of course, but, uh, and then I said, do you know how many times the same newspaper has also told us that you were once involved in an accident and you were dead? <laughs> and the next day we saw you. How many times did the same paper lie? against you. He said so many times. And I said the only reason you knew that the paper was lying is because you were alive. You were reading about your own death. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but everyone else who wasn't in your house, who had no access to you, mm -hmm. believed what they were saying. Mm -hmm. Had you mm -hmm. not come out a mm -hmm. few days later mm -hmm. and given a speech, we would have believed a lie. So you came out to prove that article wrong. Mm. Mm. A newspaper can write about even a fight that the leader of a nation has been fighting with his wife throughout the night. And if you look at uh, how far the people are from that bedroom. <laughs> it's astonishing. Mm. And people can believe that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, you having seen so many lies in the same paper concerning you, why is it that when you now read about another person in the same paper, mm. you are found holding that same paper that lied about you and you knew it was a lie because it was you. Mm -hmm. But whatever the paper is saying concerning another person, which is not yourself, mm -hmm. it is true. What is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what if we were to go by everything they, they write? Even myself, I shouldn't be sitting with you here. Mm -hmm. There are so many wrong things about you that I've read. Mm -hmm. But are you smart enough to transcend? and to go above what is being said. I'm touching on this so that I help this gentleman yes, to understand how did he discover? Yes, sir. Was it people saying? Did he discover that by himself? And um, is it because that's what people are saying, everyone is saying that, and then you end up believing that's, that, that is what he is doing. So, you need to really have correct information before you can make a decision. 
have all the necessary information in place before you can finally reach a conclusion. Oh. I've said this before, I have to say it again. Nothing is as it first appears. Mm. Nothing is as mm. it first appears. Whether you have seen your man of God in a car, driving and there was a lady sitting on the passenger, There were no introductions done there. What all you did was to see him driving and there was a lady sitting next to him. Is there a scripture in the Bible that is being violated by that sitting arrangement? You have to be very careful because the devil himself can show you things. He can show you things. Mm. Hmm. and lead you to certain conclusions which are not real. Okay? Yes. Now, the process that leads into the discovery, yeah, right. that is what I'm really focusing on. Yes, well. Have you ever been wrong about certain people? Many times. Many times? Many, many times. <laughs> Have you ever been wrong? That's the question. Have you ever met a person that you trusted and you realized that you just trusted the wrong person? Indeed, Father, yes. Have you ever suspected a person then you realized that the person was a good person? Yes, ashamedly so. I see. Be very, 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 very careful before you reach any conclusion. Most of what you hear concerning a lot of people, when you get close to them, what you will see is the opposite. Then you realize this was the devil all along trying to keep me away from my source, from a good relationship. Mm. Wow. I'm not saying the man of God, the Father, is not doing it. I have to touch both sides. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma How did you get to know? Mm. Before I became that uh, strong in the prophetic, because I had no one really to help and to assist and to nurture me in that area. Until my father, spiritual father, Prophet Victor Kusibuate did his best to also bring out the best out of me. I wasn't as, as sensitive as I am now. I wasn't as smart as I am now. So it means something was done to my spirit. There was a deposit of spiritual intelligence into me, the spirit, by my father. Yes. <laughs> so, but back then, there are people honestly, that I would have wanted to have <laughs> as my mentors. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, I, I also made mistakes. Mm. I have written so many emails to a lot of men of God around the world. Men of God that I I, I, I admired so much. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it was their style. Maybe I loved them because of what I didn't know about them. Mm -hmm. But um, I never managed to get their attention because some were very big people. Mm -hmm. But I needed their attention. I needed really to submit. 
And I wasn't known also. Maybe that's why I never got the attention because they didn't know who this guy was. Had they known, obviously I would, I would have received a response from all of them. So those emails went unanswered. And if you ask me today, I'm grateful to God that I never got answered. Because mm. before I got answers, I realized that that was a wrong move. You need to take time really to study people. Wow. He asked the question, is everyone supposed to have a father? I would say, fatherhood is not for everyone. Mm. Don't, don't, don't feel guilty about that, for not having a father, it's not, mm. it's not for everyone. It's not for everyone. A father is, a, is, is more than a mentor, but he's a, he's a mentor. A father is a coach. Mm. A father is a teacher, he's a guide. A father is, is more than just an instructor. Mm. You know, a father is a standard. Mm. Mm. A father is a pointer, a father is a bridge, you see. But, uh, uh, that is not for, for everyone. If a father is a bridge, is everyone supposed to use a bridge? No, some choose swimming. Mm, mm. Okay? Yeah. And um, you don't necessarily need a father because you need a father there must be something within you that needs him. Wow. Mm. And as much as you may not believe in mentors, but as long as you have something that requires mentorship, you must then have a mentor that you don't love, but you have him because he is loved by your gift. Mm. I have to really wow. say that again. Yes, Father. Yes, you may not love your father, but as long as your father is loved by what you carry, is there something within you that prefers that man in as much as you may not prefer him? You may not love Mr. Ford. You may not love Mr. Toyota, mm. but I can assure you that your journey loves him. Wow. 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 You may not love Mr. Mess Ferguson or Mr. John D. Mm. <laughs> or Mr. Fordson Major. <laughs> but, but, your <laughs> but your field loves him. Your career loves him. So fatherhood is not like everyone is a must. If you are empty and not carrying an assignment, wow. if you don't have a mandate, then don't waste your time. Don't bother yourself finding a mentor. Because mm. the mentor that you find if he finds nothing in you to mentor, he will fail as a mentor. Do you have anything that requires mentorship? <laughs> so fatherhood is never for everyone. Mentors are never for everyone. You must have something within you that requires training. Training, is there something within you? And that something must be the thing that falls in love with the mentor. Wow. So you may find some things that you don't like about your mentor, mm. but stay there until your gift finds some things that he doesn't like about that mentor. <laughs> he's not your mentor. He's the, your gift. If he's your <laughs> gift's mentor. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so, since not everyone is carrying something, then not everyone should be assisted in carrying what they don't have. Mm. Not everyone. Do you have a mandate? Do you have an assignment? Wow. Now, then when you submit to a father, there is an issue of submission that is needed. And according to my understanding, 
Um, he said something again. To what extent? Mm. It's like till yes, to till where, or maybe till when, or even where. Mm. That's what. Should a spiritual father interfere with your ministry? There is interference. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> the kind of interference. Uh, can a mentor at any point really interfere? Can a spiritual father interfere with yeah. anything that you're doing that is spiritual in nature? Hmm? Can a spiritual father, and you are his spiritual son, mm -hmm. and then he interferes with your spiritual practice, mm. ministry, what sort of interference is that? Mm. Am I saying there can't be any interference? There could be. He should have told us the kind of interference, and then I would have told him that's not interference. Mm. Okay. Had he told me the, 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 the interference, mm. Mm. I would have actually helped him. But anyway, there could be uh, other ways that a mentor can interfere especially if he doesn't also understand certain lines. And also if even the lines are not properly drawn. Because people only s submit to a certain extent. Oh. Not all the way, every time. Mm. So if, if you submit to a man, you must have declared to the man how far and how deep you would want that relationship to go. Mm. If there was no time that you really sat down and you discussed about the extents of that relationship, then there's nothing called encroachment wow. okay. or trespassing mm -hmm. because the boundaries are not well defined. You must have told your mentor, you can only mentor me to this extent. Okay, so if you've never opened up to your mentor, there can't be any interference. You might have him walk straight into your bedroom mm -hmm. because the boundaries are not clearly defined. Joseph was given that opportunity by Potiphar mm -hmm. to oversee everything he had. But he said to Potiphar's wife, except you, mm -hmm. except you, my master has given me charge over everything else apart from you. So the boundaries were clearly defined. clearly defined. And he knew about that. So there must have been a time when Potiphar took this young boy and said, <laughs> be careful, young man. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do in this house, touch everything else, but not my wife. Mm -hmm. There must have been a time. So he's respecting those boundaries. He's looking after everything else, mm -hmm. save for Potiphar's wife. Interference. If I'm to visit your ministry, your ministry, and I'm coming as a mentor, as a coach, there is need for sons to be taught, like you highlighted, both of you. You need to be taught on how to become sons and good sons and mature sons. That'd be fun. And then you are developed into becoming fathers. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes, sir. When you get to the point where you are now a father, then you must understand that uh, you must derive lessons from sonship. Mm -hmm. 
And those lessons help you become a good father. Mm. <laughs> you must have been a son. Wow. For you to understand how to deal with your son. If you start by being a father, you may make a lot of mistakes that will be deemed interference mm. by your sons. So you must have gone through the process of be eventually becoming a father, having passed through the school of sonship. Sons. Wow. Have you ever been a son? Do you know what it takes? to be a son. <laughs> Have you ever received instruction and followed through an instruction? <laughs> Before you make it hard on your sons, have you ever been a son? Now, if you've been a son, you know what needs to be done to a son. Mm. You only take it from what you needed your father to do for you. That's when you begin to realize that, oh, okay. So if I'm, I'm to come to your ministry, because he has got a ministry, this person asking the question. Yes, Father. If I'm to come to your ministry as a mentor, this is what I, I do. I have first to really study my son. How I've helped him develop what my son has finally become. Mm -hmm. Now it is a wrong picture when you get into my car and you find my biological father driving me. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there and he's the one driving. It's not a good sight. No, it's not wrong. Is it? No, it's not a good sight. It's not. It means I'm not a good driver, if that's the case. I haven't been acknowledged as yet by my father as a safe driver. But the day he believes that I'm now a good driver, he must then sit at the passenger seat. And then I'm the one driving and allow him to rest mm. and to enjoy his sleep. Because yes, he has done his part. Yes, so as a mentor, I think his father should have looked at him and seen the ability in him to run the ministry mm. without him interfering. But if he keeps on uh, appearing and resurfacing and maybe uh, trying to help you here and trying to help you over there, he might have discovered as a father that you have still have some inabilities. Mm. You are not well equipped to look after yourself and even to be driving that ministry by yourself. But if I have a mature son, and then I'm coming to you to help you. Mm -hmm. um, I must understand my son. That is what I do personally, even not with just sons, no, with ev every other man of God. That is, that is my style. When I'm invited by a man of God, honestly, this is, this, you have to hear this. Never go to another man of God's church before you fully understand his ministry, his focus, his area, his strength. Mm. He has got several advantages. I cannot, like you have seen it, you can't be a wrestler, you can't be a boxer and you just jump into the ring before you watch other uh, <laughs> fights. fights taking place, yeah. Exactly, you have to study the band that you're going to, to, fight. to, 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 uh, to be fighting against. 
Because if I'm coming to your ministry, I should have known that maybe faith is your, your greatest area. Maybe healing is your greatest area. Wow. Maybe leadership is your greatest area. Maybe administration is your greatest area. Maybe prof prophecy, the prophetic, is your greatest area. Before I bring my gift, if you invite me, honestly, this is what I do. You have to preach to me first. Why me? What is it that I care that, that you would want your people to benefit from? Tell me, if you can't convince me, what have you seen in me that you want your people to have? Okay? Mm -hmm. Some, they would say, um, I, would, I would just want you to come and teach on submission. And then I'll start with the man of God. Are you submissive enough? Wow. Is it fair for people to come and submit under you? <laughs> Is it a seed that you have sown for you then to harvest that seed? That is why I'm no longer easy to invite these days because I start with the man of God himself. It is very important. Mm. But if he wants me to come and minister, I would love to know the reason why he is inviting me. I want to know why is he inviting me. Is he inviting me to sing? <laughs> is he inviting me to teach? And on what subject? Mm. Wow. Is it about soul winning? Mm. Is it a crusade? Mm. Because I don't want to then get into his area where he is even better than me. And I'm wasting his time and I'm wasting his people. And I'm also wasting my time. There are certain people that when they begin to touch on a topic, it becomes theirs. They are masters in those areas. Mm. And you don't dare touch those areas because every verse that you are trying to make reference to, it has been dealt with thoroughly. Mm. And you're in trouble. Mm. You have to be <laughs> 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 He has done his work to straighten up certain scriptures and uh, dealt with the heresies and then and then when you come without investigating the man mm. you are you are you are delving into areas that they have. every single person in that church knows this is wrong mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you are in trouble mm. so study study your mentor and let your mentor also study you wow <laughs> You may think that you are helping your protege, you are helping your mentee, and yet sometimes maybe you're actually destroying him. Mm -hmm. You're destroying him. Ah, interference. <laughs> Uh, saying, my father is interfering with my work. <laughs> How is he interfering? How is he interfering? I, I, I really would want, if I have a son, then my son must understand that. You see, I told you this, that one day when uh, Joseph brought his two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, mm -hmm. before his father Jacob, he asked that Jacob blesses his sons. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yes, sir. Yes. And what Jacob did was to cross his hands mm -hmm. over those two boys. Yes, and the Bible says, and Jacob blessed Joseph. Mm. You see, mm. Joseph had asked his father to bless his sons. And when his father was blessing his grandchildren, he did not bless his grandchildren. He, he blessed, blessed his Joseph, son. his son. Mm. 
Wow. 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 That is the protocol of the blessing. Wow. That's how oil flows. He knew that the only way I can bless a grandson is by blessing my son. Mm -hmm. And the blessing comes from my son to his son. Wow. So if you invite me to your ministry and you are my son, your people are not my people. Your children are not my children. Wow. I can only bless them by blessing you. Mm. And Jacob blessed. <laughs> Joseph. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> maybe that's what he's calling interference. I'm just trying to mm. find where this thing is wow. coming from. Mm. So your son is not my son. Wow. You are my son, but your son is not my son. Your daughter is not my daughter. Mm. If I want to rebuke him, your son, I rebuke you. If I want to bless him, your son, I bless you. Oh. So what I do, if I really want your son to become the best version of himself, I have to nurture you, look after you, bless you so much that you can then bless my grandson. So, as long as I have access to you, I have arrived. Mm. Wow. Mm. Mm. <laughs> okay? Yes, Father. So you can have, like, <laughs> <laughs> I have arrived. I as need, long as I have access to you. Access to you. I have arrived. I have arrived as a father. I may not need to have access to your ministry because you are my ministry. Mm. Every sermon, every teaching, every doctrine that I have, as long as I, have, I can sit down with you for three hours, I'm coming from a conference. Mm. Mm. You are my son. Mm. I equip you and then I let you go. Mm. And you transfer what I've given to you to your children. Who knows? I don't know how his father is interfering with his ministry. I don't know. Maybe he's calling his members. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. But there must be lines drawn. Yes. Are you following this? Following father. My father, please. I will read the statement that you've just said again. Because I believe that if there is a man of God watching us right now, this point, <laughs> like what Pastor Kwanamba said before, we can never really pay you for what you say to us. <laughs> but it's just too deep. As long as I have access to you, mm -hmm. I have arrived. My father, this is too much of a statement. Thank you so much. You know, if my grandson manages to have access to me and then he tells me of a problem which I believe maybe does not implicate my son. If that happens, if that happens, then I must find a way of leading him back to his father. Mm. If you shared this with your father, No, there could be a reason why he chose not to share that with him. Maybe his father is implicated. Mm, mm. Now he has come to the grandfather mm. to get assistance. Mm. But what I need to do also as a father is to make sure that my son doesn't lose his son. I have to lead his son back to him. Even if I have the best advice, I have to send him back to his father, and then I send the best advice that I have to his father. And then they meet there and they help each other. Wow. Okay. I remember one day we had uh, pastors um, that came. I think uh, it was in 
wedding anniversary and we had um, many pastors that came that are sons to me. And after the conference, mom prepared uh, uh, dinner for all of us and some had brought their sons and daughters also just to celebrate with us. And after the dinner, just across the table, I could see uh, some of them had issues, problems that I picked prophetically. And I remember dragging one of my son. We went outside, I said, how long has that daughter been close to you? How long has she been close to you? And he said, now it's about seven years. And I said, that couple, I think that lady has a problem because I'm not seeing any children. And then he knelt down, he started crying. He said, I don't know what to do. My father, this couple has been so wonderful, very helpful, even my coming here. They've assisted. They do everything for me and yet no children. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I don't know what to do. And then I said to him, <laughs> two months from now, she's <laughs> going to conceive. Yes. Wow. Oh, yes. But this is what I want you to do. I said, exactly 11 months from now, she's going to be carrying a baby in her arms. Mm. And I said, there's a reason why it has to happen in the next two months and not immediately. I have to pray for you. You go back. At the end of the second month, I want you to pray for her. In just two or one week after that prayer, she's going to conceive. You have to declare these words upon her as you are praying. And you tell her in, two, in one to two weeks from now, you get a confirmation. Go to the doctor. You are going to be be pregnant. There's a reason why I said two months, because I wanted her to forget about her visit. Mm. But she was once in Zimbabwe. And now, and I told my son, never tell them that it came from me. Mm. Go and do your work. These are your children. And then he went. At the end of the second month, he went and he prayed for this couple, and they have a baby. Wow. Right at that point. Wow. But thank you, Father. If you look at their loyalty, that couple, under their father, they are men of God today. It's amazing. Had I prophesied to them, had I laid my hands on them, they would have come to the life of him too. Thank me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But look at how they have bonded now. I've created a better relationship for them. I'm just trying to deal with maybe interference. Maybe that's what he's calling interference. Hey. I have to hide behind my son. And I minister to his people through him. Wow. Let them see me in him. I don't know if you are following. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> there are so many things. Now, now if, if some people think that I'm answering only one question, maybe you, we're not listening to the question. Many questions mm, yes. in that question. So I'm, I'm, I'm very thorough. So you keep on forgiving me for taking too much time on one question. 
I have to touch on everything else, including what you didn't ask. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, if, if it's a weakness, then I like it. It's a good weakness. <laughs> if it's a weakness. <laughs> if it's a weakness. <laughs> Please don't take away that weakness for me. I like it because it's, it, especially don't think that I'm answering your question simply because it was you asking it. You can have other people asking questions on your behalf. Okay? Yes, Father. Yes. Also, sometimes you also, sons, you end up destroying the relationship that you had with your father. Maybe by the way that even, how do I put it? Maybe you belong to a ministry. You have your wife, you have your wife, you come and you sit under me. Your wives are supposed to respect you and honor you and honor the God that you carry. She cannot look at you as someone who is not smart, someone who is ungodly, and yet probably you initiated this relationship as a father figure, you chose me to say, this is going to become our mentor, our prophet, or our father. And then you brought your family along. Your wife should respect you for making that choice. And it is wrong if she's going to think that uh, my allegiance only to the prophet, only to our father, and then she doesn't respect you. Mm. It doesn't make sense because you can't be a carnal husband having chosen such a spiritual father. Mm. There is something good about you that she must respect you for. I'm talking now to uh, not just your ministry, as in people gathering around you, but even your wife, your children, that's your ministry. I should not interfere. Mm. I should not destroy that relationship in trying to maintain our relationship, the two of us. Oh. And then I destroy the rest of the relationships that you, that you had, even with your family. Mm. No. Your wife must treat you with respect the same way that she respects me. If I feel I'm being respected more than you are respected by your own wife, then you have a wrong wife. Mm. 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 If, okay, I've, I know we have got ladies that are listening to me. Yes, <laughs> you are married. You belong to an organization, a denomination, church, just so that people can understand. And you go there as a couple, maybe you have children. As a lady, if you are married, your submission, first and foremost, has to be to your husband, you have to submit to your husband. If that relationship is not intact, even if you are to come and you sit under me, we can never establish a lasting relationship under those, under such circumstances. Mm. When your prophet is talking to you, is teaching you, you take notes during service. Do you do the same when your husband is talking to you? As a wife, don't always say, the prophet said, the, the, the prophet said, the, prof, the, 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 the prophet said, the, the, the. <laughs> he was there, your husband was present in that service. He had 
the prophet saying, whatever you are saying, the prophet saying. What did your husband say? Because the prophet is not your husband. He never attempted even to marry you, to comfort you in that area. You could have been alone today with all these prophets around. But one man chose you. One man loved you. And he took you in. When is he going to be respected? For making such a choice. Because some wives, they think, my husband is never right. Mm. They fight every decision that they see their husband making. Mm. <laughs> and yet them getting married was a decision. That that same man made. So if your husband is always wrong every time, probably he was also wrong when he chose you. Why not celebrate him? If he is not that smart, but why not celebrate him for that one thing? Okay, from the moment that you got married until now, how many men have proposed you? If none, there's a possibility that until now, you could have been alone. But somebody sacrificed, somebody risked, and now you're married to a man that you don't want to respect. If he is teaching you on a business idea, do you say, wait, sweetheart, and then you rush and then you take your, the same notebook and alongside your prophet's notes, you begin to write what your husband is telling you. Let him watch you take notes. You can't convince him that you submit to the prophet if you can't follow a simple instruction. If he says two sugar teaspoons in my cup and then you put four. That is not right. I must look at the way that you submit to your husband and then I believe that I have a relationship with both of you. Because that's your ministry. You're exposing your men of God. Men are jealous in nature. You can't be hearing about the prophet, prophet, in as much as he loves his prophet. But there are times when the two of you have to agree on certain things. Leave the prophet out. Make your own decisions. Even if it is a wrong move, him as a husband, let him make that mistake. He has to. He has to. The prophet is a prophet. Yes, he's your prophet, but he's not your husband. I'm not your husband. I'm <laughs> come on. <laughs> oh my God. Ah. There is a level of union that is required. That even sometimes in wrongdoing, Ananias and Sapphira, they were committed to one lie. Mm. In the presence of a man of God, Peter, and highly anointed. She said, as long as my husband can lie to you, <laughs> I'll follow him. I'll follow him. Honor, honor, honor your husband. Respect your husband. Respect your husband. Do certain things and when you're, when you're asked by other ladies, you say, my husband taught me this. Mm. It's very important. By saying, prophet, this prophet, you're exposing the prophet. You are just like um, <laughs> that woman. I don't want to mention her name. Let me put, you, you put your name there. <laughs> she starts with a B. Yeah. But <laughs> Sheba. <laughs> <laughs> she went to the river. 
right? Yes, mm. And she was taking a bath. And then David went up the roof and saw that she was bathing. And he said, go and get her for me. Had she not gone to the river, had she honored her body, how can a wife of a general in the army leave your house, leave your bathroom, and you choose the river of all the places, and you exposed yourself to a man who is being afflicted by, uh, <laughs> who is evolving, <laughs> who is involved in, in wrong, in wrong do, you have exposed yourself. Had she not gone to the river, do you know that David was never going to commit that adultery? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. So you have to be very careful because sometimes you expose your men of God to unnecessary attacks. Cover yourself, protect yourself well. Help him become pure before God. I don't believe that a woman can be a good child of God, only honoring what I'm saying and she doesn't honor what her husband is saying. I don't think there is a relationship there. So what I'm saying is, I have to restore the two of you, the two of you, your relationship with your children, with your wife has to be intact. Because that's your wife, that's not my wife. Mm. Mm. That's your son, that's not my son. I must teach your son to be loyal to you. Are you following this? Yes, sir. Mm. I can come into your ministry and I have to be very careful, what am I going to be teaching about? Is it about Jesus? Is it about the Holy Spirit? I'm here to talk about the Holy Spirit. I should have heard you talk about the Holy Spirit. Wow. And how far you have gone in teaching about the Holy Spirit before I attempt mm. on that same topic. Okay? Yes, sir. <laughs> what am I coming to teach on? Jesus. Or maybe God the Father. I want to talk about God the Father. Is that the subject? Is that why you have invited me to come? Is that the area where I would want my people developed in? You could be working, but maybe that's not the area. Mm. Maybe these people, they've heard everything about the Father. They've heard everything about the Holy Spirit, everything about Jesus but maybe they are not loyal to your son. Why not teach on that? Wow. Topics that your son cannot touch on. Wow. But you, wow. maybe as a father, as a grandfather, mm. you can train, mm. you can teach, you can unite. Mm. Listen to every message that I've preached. In any ministry, so consistent. True. I always talk about their men of God. Very wow. true. Very true. Mm. I've never made that. It's amazing how you do it. Wow. They are, and the people will be wondering, is he talking about ours? This, this man of God? Yes. <laughs> I want them to understand that God has given you his best. Mm. Mm. I will never try to get their love or their attention so that they can become a better man of God than theirs. Mm. No. I can spend weeks just talking about the men of God. They are men of God. Mm. And their men of God has to teach them about Jesus. Mm. Mm. Yes. If they believe him, whatever he is going to say concerning Jesus, then they will end up believing in that Jesus because they believe the man who is talking about Jesus. Indeed, Father. Okay? Yes, Father. So I have to help the people understand what they have already. Because people have a tendency of admiring a guest. Mm. They ask for his number, his email address. What's up? Can I, can I please talk to you after? That's not right. Mm. That's not right. 
what the man of God needs to do is to make sure that he unites you with your people. If that is not what your father is doing, then probably you, are, you have a problem. It's a big problem that you're having. You must then be able to sit down and talk to your mentor. You have to tell your mentor, this is not right. A relationship with your father must get to a level where you can even talk to your father, pastor. You can talk to your father when the relationship has developed. You must be able to talk to your father about your concerns. A proper son. It's not a violation of a relationship. You must approach me and say, hey, my father, these days, I'm now the cook. I'm cooking every single day. Why, my son? You're, you're, of course, some will say it, your daughter. Your daughter is not, is not coming home <laughs> on time. Ah, where is she? She's in church. She's working in church from morning till evening. You must be able to call me and you tell me, ah, my father, your daughter, she's on prayer every single day. She has gone to the mountains. She's changing, she's moving from one mountain to another. She wants to finish all the mountains. <laughs> And I'm all by myself. <laughs> and then there's something that she, that she doesn't understand about prayer. Then we can find ways of uniting you and helping you. If it's because she's cleaning my office, we don't have that happening, of course, in our ministry. If she's cleaning my office every time, and then she's not attending to her duties and you're not being attended. I have a wrong person working in my office. Mm. She doesn't belong there. She must be fired. Mm. Because that's hypocrisy. How is your husband doing? Is he happy with your service? If not, then you don't deserve to be working even in the house of God. You don't start from there. Oh. Mm. You don't start from there. Mm. You don't start from there. So that's, I'm just trying to touch on all the areas. What could this interference be? be. Mm. Just trying to touch on so many areas. Mm. But I'm, I'm, I must be there to unite and to bring you people together. And um, somebody came to me and he wanted to give me money. He goes to a certain church. And then I looked at the man, I said, have you ever given this money to your pastor? No, why? He had to explain to me why me and not his pastor. Wow. Well. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying I didn't take the money. I'm saying he had to explain <laughs> had to me. Ex he had to explain to me why me and not his past. Okay? Yes, mm. So because I'm there to build yes. mm. those relationships. Mm. Wow. So I should never have access that you don't, unless you give me permission. Mm. That is how we can keep these relationships intact. If the wrongdoing that your man of God is doing is maybe uh, sleeping with women in the church, mm. um, how did you know? Maybe it was somebody close to you. How much do you trust that somebody? Yes, sir. Is he telling you the truth? Mm. Is there evidence? Mm. <sighs> if there is evidence, maybe it is your own wife that was proposed by your so-called spiritual father, mm -hmm. then uh, you can't continue with such a relationship. You rather 
uh, run your ministry by yourself? I have to close on this question. Maybe we'll touch, we'll try next time. I promise that maybe we'll deal with five. <laughs> but I don't know. Uh, God have mercy. There's <laughs> <laughs> a lot, Father. <laughs> but you see, what I would advise you to do, men of God, is to move on. Especially if the information is true. You can't afford to remain in a relationship with such a man who is making advances. Maybe might have proposed your wife. And you say, he has been my father, so what can I do? There is something that you can do. He has ceased to be spiritual. Wow. Wow. You can call him a biological father if you want. If he gave birth to you physically. But once he has lost the spirituality, because if your father who was made spiritual by having Jesus finally loses that Jesus, he has lost the spirituality. You no longer have a spiritual father. Mm. But make sure that that information is accurate. And also, is it right that I can run a ministry without a father? You can run a ministry without a father, but I don't think you can run a ministry without a mentor. You need a mentor. You need a mentor. You need a mentor. I can, I can assure you, I've seen people cry. You rather not have a spiritual father than have a wrong one. Wow. You rather not have a spiritual mm. father than have a wrong one. Than having a wrong one. You'll be in trouble. You'll be in trouble. Don't entangle yourself. It's not necessary. It's not necessary. You can be mentored by even a dead man. Buy his tapes, buy his books. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and then you can put his advice into areas where you see fit. Mm. Very important very important, especially if lines are not being respected. If lines are not being respected. I would rather have a son who is honest with me, who tells me that my wife doesn't listen to me. My father, please advise my wife. She only takes your advice. She doesn't take mine. Mm. I will have to rebuke your wife for that. I should never celebrate that. Okay? Because I've replaced you mm -hmm. in her life. And I have to quickly pull myself out of that union and make sure that she follows your instructions. She obeys you. That's the only way you can have a blessing in your house. Wow. That's mm. me. And that's what I live by. Mm. These are practical issues. That's right. Men of God can take over. A lot of men of God that I know are control freaks. Mm. They want to run everything. They want to run their church, want to run the, their members, they want to run every single couple, their businesses. No, 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 no. Mm. Teach your children and let them go. Mm. 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 Allow them to Take advice from other sources. Mm. You are not everything. You are their man of God, but you are not their lecturer at school. You are their man of God, but you are not, you are not their medical doctor. You are their man of God, but you are, not, you are not their lawyer. Your people must experience that freedom being around you. Connect them to other people much better than you. Don't own people. Don't try to own them. If you try to own people, God will allow them to have problems that you cannot solve. Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's a tough one. Mm. Okay? That's fine. So that's all I can say for now. So be very careful. Do your homework. Make sure that what you have heard 
about the men of God is correct. Because people do lie. People do lie. If also you found that, I've seen it myself, if you study the book of Genesis chapter number nine, you know the story of Ham. Mm. Yes, mm. Father. Ham went into the tent. Yes, Father. Mm. And he realized that his father was naked. Mm. 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 He laughed. Mm. Went out, told his brothers. And then when the father woke up, he cursed the son, Canaan. Mm. Mm. Cursed be Canaan. Yes. Because of what he, Ham did. Yes, Father. Okay? Mm. But also my father taught me from that scripture that it was because of access. Wow. That Ham wow. had. That Ham had wow. that made him wow. to see the nakedness of the father. His wow. Father. And don't mess with that opportunity. Mm. You might have been given access by that father even for you to see the nakedness of your father. Mm. And when you laugh at your father's nakedness, what you're laughing at is that opportunity of entering into his tent. Imagine it wasn't a servant in the field who saw the nakedness of the master. It was a son yes, who saw that Noah was naked. Mm. It was a son. Mm. And Noah was not naked outside. Mm. He was naked in the right place. Mm. But it's because he, the father, had given him access to enter into the tent, therefore giving him access to discover the nakedness of the father. Mm. Didn't your father participate in your discovery? Mm. Did he not help you discover him? Is it not the access? If you were far away from him, you would be hearing this from other people, but you saw it with your eyes. Isn't that an opportunity that you are playing with? All along you were loving this man of God, not because he wasn't being sinful, but now you want to depart because you have discovered. It is knowing mm. that is giving you problems now. You loved him before. He is still the same man. He was sinning all along, but you used to love him while he was sinning, but only because you didn't know he was sinning. Now that you know, you think what has changed is the man. What has changed is you. Now you know. What you wanted was simply to love the man that you don't know. Mm. That's what you wanted. Now you know him, you say, we have to part ways. Not because he has finally sinned, but because now you know. So be careful. Had he not given you access, you were never going to know about his weaknesses. You were never. So isn't that that opportunity that you got, that you are playing with? Had he kept you away, you were never going to discover. Had he closed and locked his tent, you were never going to discover his, his, his nakedness. You were never going to discover his nakedness. Mm. But he gave you access into his life. And it is that access that you are now playing with. You are accusing him, not just for sinning, but for giving you access. He could have kept that life away from you. But how close are you to your father? You can be so close that one of these days when he's having a serious migraine headache, he can give you money and say, go and buy me some painkillers. To certain sons, it's a discovery of a weakness. Because he has watched you heal the sick. Mm, mm. And to him, he doesn't believe that my father can get sick. And the day he sees that, he's calling his wife, he's calling his friends, I can't believe this. He preaches about faith, he preaches about healing, and yet he takes medication, this man. Mm. To other sons, this could be a discovery of a weakness, mm. Mm. not just a doubter. Mm. Now his faith starts going down. He no longer believes in the healing power that his father carries mm. because he's taking medication. You see? Yet it was access. Your father thought you are mature enough. 
if your son is mature enough, even as a spiritual father, you can advise your Timothy, mm. take little wine because of your stomach. This is a father-son. They are not praying for each other. Timothy is a son. Paul is an anointed man of God whose handkerchiefs can heal the sick. Mm. But he is giving his spiritual son a physical advice. Take little wine because of your stomach. Why is he not praying for that problem to go? Why is Timothy not walking away because now Paul cannot heal him? I'm looking for a better anointed father who can heal me when my children are sick. Mm. Mm. What an advice. Mm. <laughs> From a spiritual father, mm. go to a doctor. Mm. In some sons, you can lose them. You can lose a son by advising a son, go see a doctor, get advice from a doctor. They will say, what kind of a spiritual father mm. is this? Mm. You see that? Yes, sir. These are some of the weaknesses that you sons discover and you think that your father has lost it. You have lost it. Okay? Yes, mm. You must grow as a son, hear me, to a level where, as a father, I must be comfortable around you. Opening up to you, not hiding certain areas from you, so that you can also learn even from my mistakes. But then if you run away from me because of my openness, then you deserve another father who is not as open as I am. Mm. Then you will find him wherever you go, a father who will keep you away so that you don't discover him. I must be free to a point where Jesus comes back and he pulls out his hand. He says, look at the hand. And you can see the wound, blood coming out. Touch my side. The man who can walk through walls. He didn't, he didn't cover himself. He didn't remove the scars. He had to remain with scars. And he's showing them. Because they are at a level now where even a weakness on your body must serve as proof that you're a warrior. Wow. You have fought wars. Wow. wow. But if the disciples are not mature enough, Jesus, be very careful. You have to hide your wounds because they will call you weak. But if your sons are mature, you can bring out your hand, show them your weaknesses, and they will believe in you more. They will believe in you more. Oh, wow. Do you hear this? Mm. Most fathers are busy hiding their wounds mm. because their sons are not mature. The day they discover a wound, they have discovered a weakness. Mm. So mm. my father is not strong after all. Mm. Are you following this? Yes. That's enough for today. Thank you so much. Hey. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Oh, that was so much, Father. Mm. You know, Father, mm. as you were answering this question, I, especially when you were highlighting on the aspect of the wife, I took her as a representation of a church, a son's church. And my father, you go to the book of Hosea, and you realize it's the same way it was done. The bulk of the Old Testament. This is how the church was portrayed, even in the New Testament. And how you give your examples is just amazing. And then you come and then you, Ish, you explain the structure of how you deal with your own sons. The structure of the relationship. Clearly defined. And I... One of the things that amazes me about you is, unlike what we witness out there, what we have seen out there, and what we have heard out there, especially, like I've said before, 
once you have access to the sun, that's all that you need. It's unlike anywhere else. Unfortunately, I'll have to say this. And people are crying out there, especially men of God. And Father, I would want to thank you because of that. Mm. And not only that, the example that you gave about how you ministered to, the, to your son and eventually the, 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 the girl child having, conceiving. Mm-hmm. My father, it doesn't exist anywhere. It's not there. But you come here and you explain to us how you do it. I know for a fact I'm a pastor. We love glory. We love to be seen in the action. Mm. We love to be noticed. Mm. But the way you do it is now beyond the ordinary pastoral way of doing things, the ordinary fatherly way of doing things. Mm. I've seen people that claim to be fathers, my father, and they will take the phone number of that child and they will call the child afterwards Mm. and they will make sure they are the one doing it behind even the son's back. But the way you do it, Father. Mm. And, and the, father, reason, the reason why I had to mention that, Pastor, that woman that finally got a baby, mm. the reason why I had to mention it here, it was because finally he, the pastor himself opened up mm. wow. to the couple. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, he opened up, he said, that's what the prophet said to me. And then I did it according to his instructions. So finally, the couple got to know mm. oh, wow. that mm. I was involved. Mm. Wow. That's why I was at liberty even to share that, wow. that story with you here. You know, my father, even the way that you have, yes, you have answered this question, but I think today you have given us the depths of fatherhood explained like never before. Mm. Somebody will say, all right, all along, I, I, I didn't realize that I needed a father because of the information that they probably had from elsewhere. But you are coming and you are giving light to the world for those people that have something within them that needs to be nurtured. Mm. And they are realizing that whatever or the way through which we were taught or we got information about fatherhood is not it. Mm. Even the immediate examples of what we thought was fatherhood, it's not it. But today, tonight, you have explained it in a fabulous manner. And I believe that somebody out there, because of this information, Mm. they are looking for your phone number right now. (laughs) Or email. (laughs) If they have questions, they know where to send them. (laughs) (laughs) Father, thank you so much for creating this time with us. Um, We look forward to getting into more of these questions in depth. Thank you so much, Father. I appreciate it. Thank you. Wow, we've had a fabulous time with our Father. We trust that these questions that were brought forward and the answers consequently helped you immensely. We encourage you to continue to send your questions to Prophet Emmanuel Makandiwa's Facebook page directly to his inbox, or you can send them to the email info at emmanuelmakandiwa.com. And don't forget, send us your full name, surname, and most importantly, which country you are sending your questions from. Until next time, Shalom.